First off, phenomenal job. Like amazing, amazing. Thank you. Can you walk us through the process of getting the film together? The idea, the genesis, where did that come from? You know, Jake was the guy who, uh, he taught me, he took me under his wing. <sighs> it's a little more emotional than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> um, he, he took me under his wing and, uh, at a time when no one thought I was ever going to. I just tore my rotator cuff. I was just let go at WCW. And he took me under his wing and he taught me over that year I was out. And then time, like it takes over everybody's life when they get that big push. And uh, we lost touch. And then we got back in touch and then up and down. And then I just heard he was, you know, we had you know, over a disagreement. We'd stopped talking for a while and it was, you know, it was over something stupid. And I just called him up and said, listen, dude, I want to fix this. And I heard you're not doing so well. Then I called my, uh, my buddy, Steve Yu. And we've been doing a, a, a number of projects together all around inspiring people that, to own their lives. And uh, I said, listen, I sent Jake the program and um, you know, let's see what he does with it. And he says to me, you know, you're moving back to Atlanta. What if Jake moved in with you? Mm -hmm. I said, what? <laughs> Jake move in with me, dude, Arthur. You know, he did it at home. Jake don't have to move in with me. <laughs> yeah, but if he's with us, can you imagine all that positive influence? Yo, know, he can't fail. I said, dude, you don't know Jake Roberts. Sure, well, it seems like, uh, especially in filmmaking, TV, uh, we're getting into this kind of reality period where we're, we're, we're getting behind the curtain uh, of a lot of the, the, the you know, say you know, professional wrestling, we grew up in the 80s, we really didn't know what was going on in terms of the lifestyle until recently you saw some of the wrestlers starting to pass away. I mean, this year the Hall of Fame will, will induct uh, posthumously Randy the Macho Man Savage, uh, who was my personal favorite wrestler. Woo! But I think it's brought to light or put some awareness on the topics that are, that are taken further in, in this film that were kind of started with Beyond the Mat. Well, it, it was pretty difficult coming in because I was kind of an outsider to this brotherhood. And, you know, the biggest thing for me was to try to get Jake to trust me as someone who he would allow to film. I think over time he realized that, you know, we were trying to help him because I think he felt like Beyond the Mat, you know, depicted him in a very negative way. You know, it was just an amazing thing to have so much access to this like raw experience trying to help Jake. I saw what they were doing on YouTube and this phone call that, um, that you guys made to, um, to Scott. Scott. My brother just, just died from addiction, from, from, from a problem, problem like this, you know? And um, it just hit me, man. I, I was just encouraging to see, like, like, this has got to be a movie. Why is this just a YouTube clip? This is amazing. And I didn't really know that they were, they were making a movie. So like, fast forward a year later, uh, when, he, when he called me and asked me to be involved in him, I was 100 percent in. Well, having no experience really with, with Jake or not knowing necessarily the backstory, um, can you talk a little bit about where you ended up? I mean, are things that you realized uh, about Jake's journey? I mean, were there things in hindsight that you wished you could have gone back and helped Jake with or suggested? You know, I think that if we would have known what we were getting into, <laughs> we would have never done the project. Because it, it, you know, it was like, oh, let's delve into this really tough, like I didn't know about addiction. Da Dallas had experience with, he knew people that had it. And my dad, you know, but, and that's what Jake reminded me of my dad. It didn't start out being about addiction. We didn't, we didn't really didn't know Jake had all these issues still, like, because we went there, he did, you know, we assumed that he was sober. And everything was, we, I told him, I said, I have this idea. And it was all built around Jake leaving the business the way he should have left it, with the dignity. And that was really what it was about. Like, you, you heard me say at the end of the movie, it's all about the story we tell ourselves. I asked him, I said, before you went out, 
put on your boots and walk through the curtain, were you saying to yourself, oh God, I'm gonna suck? Fuck no, you were like, I'm the king of the world, I'm gonna steal the show, I own this place. Well, why don't you do it when you get out of the ring? Because you still do. All right, can you talk a little bit about the slam dance experience? Um, it's just, it was just so amazing to see people react to what we created because we were so close to it. We watched it so many times and it was funny when we, when we screened our first screening at slam dance, like we were all like trying not to cry because we've seen it so many times, but we couldn't help it. So like you'll see at the Q and A at slam dance, we were just like all like our eyes were all red. We were trying not to cry, but it was just really such a great experience to see people react to what we created. It was awesome. Spread the word, give a hand to these guys. Thank you guys. Thank you, Sam Dance, thank you, Art Wright.